Hi, I'm Dr. Musial from Plant Docs, and today we're going to be talking about meal planning, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's specifically for the Jumpstart Your Health class or for my consultations. So a lot of this information is can be found on the portal on the Plant Docs website, and we'll give you the information for that. So first we're going to start with breakfast. And I'm going to be referring to this one called meal planning ideas. So it's not meant to be, this is what like you're eating. It, this isn't meant to be a meal plan. This is meant to just be ideas. So my goal is that after this session, you'll have some really concrete ideas that sound really good to you, that sound easy enough for you, for you to have an idea of what you're going to eat tomorrow. So I want you to print this out from the portal. It's the um, Plant Docs Weekly Meal Planner. And then as I'm talking, the idea is if you hear something and you're like, oh, that sounds good, that sounds easy, you know, just write that under breakfast. Just so when you go home, you can refer to this and say, all right, I have an idea of what I'm gonna be eating. So I'm gonna just talk about these different ideas and if something doesn't sound good to you, don't write it down. You're, you're not going to eat that, right? And for breakfast, you just really need two, maybe three things. Some people just have one thing that they eat over and over again that, that works for you. So for me, it's oatmeal. It used to be granola. And for years, I made my own granola, the, the recipes on the website. But with oatmeal, I, I don't know, I've just turned from granola to oatmeal. Um, you can make a healthy oatmeal that's just not oats. It also has like healthy fats in it. So you want to add ground flaxseed or chia seeds, a tablespoon each, or you can get the kind where it's a mixture of ground flax seeds, chia seeds, and hemp hearts together and put a couple tablespoons of that. That's going to give you your omega-3 fatty acids. And then you can mix up the oatmeal with soy milk if you want to increase the protein content and add in like a legume serving kind of or I just make mine with water. And then you wanna add fruit to sweeten it and to make it not just about the oats. So I usually add a half a cup of frozen wild Maine blueberries, the little tiny ones. And I mix it, it's literally like, I do a, a quarter cup of oatmeal, a half a cup of water and a half a cup of blueberries. That's just how I do mine. But you can also add fresh strawberries, peaches, you know, whatever is in season that you have. Sometimes I take a little handful, not like a ton, just like five walnuts and crunch them up and throw those in for um, some healthy nuts. You can sprinkle turmeric on it, or I usually do cinnamon. It's my favorite spice on my oatmeal. So this is the um, PCRM power plate, and this is in, on the portal. And the idea is to try to make your plate, this is to kind of a healthy version of the myplate.gov. So each meal, it doesn't have to have all of these, but you just want to try to balance it a little bit. So you're going to have your oats, if you're making oatmeal with your fruit, if you throw in blueberries and strawberries. And if you use, um, you know, soy milk that, you know, gives you a little bit more of the protein. And then I feel like there should be a wedge in here for healthy fats, like the walnuts and the, the flaxseed. So that's like an idea for breakfast. And if you, the other resource that's on the portal is this Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen that we talked about. And the great thing about like this oatmeal, like how many boxes can you check? That's kind of how I think about like the meals that I'm preparing. So beans, I'm, I'm not sure the, the soy milk really counts. Um, he doesn't list it as that, but I, it does give you some added protein. Berries, check. Maybe other fruit, check. Um, if you add peaches or, you know, another berry serving. And then um, nuts, spices, flaxseed, check, check, check. So you're, you're checking a lot of boxes there. If you add a bunch of different colored berries, then you're, you know, eating the rainbow a little better. So these are the three things I kind of strive for is kind of balancing the plate, 
getting the Dr. Gregor's in and eating the rainbow. Kind of like think of that when I'm when I'm meal planning. All right. So we did oatmeal. Does that sound good to you? If you want it more, um, <clears throat> some people it's a texture issue. So if you add less fluid, you can have it thicker or you can add more almond milk or water to make it thinner. You can do overnight oats where you put them in a jar and you shake it and then you eat them more in the morning cold or you can um, heat it up. You can use steel cut oats if you like it to be more hearty. And those are slightly better for you with a um, lower glycemic index, but they take a little bit longer to make. Some people batch cook the, the steel cut oats. So then you can make three or four servings at one time and then put it in the refrigerator and you can just take it out of there and heat it up for your breakfast. I'm also gonna throw in there, you can do savory oats. Um, my brother, Steve makes a batch for the week. He makes literally, you know, like the huge pasta pot. He makes a huge thing of oatmeal and then he puts in whatever vegetables he has. So he does like zucchini and peppers and broccoli and carrots and celery. And um, he adds a little like tamari to make it, you know, a little savory and um, some greens like kale or Swiss chard. And then he divvies it up into seven different containers and eats that every day you know, to each their own, right? That's super healthy, but it's not for everyone. So the second thing that I have regularly for breakfast is a smoothie. And I used to not love smoothies, um, but I've, I've changed my tune on that too. And and part of it is, is this reason, because now I used to just do like banana strawberry smoothie with like milk back when I drank milk. Um, that's just like a snack and you're gonna be hungry later. So I make this kind of smoothie now and it's on our, it's on the portal. So I do like for one person, I would do a cup of almond milk, but you can do soy or oat, whatever. And I add a quarter cup of oats, old fashioned oats. I'm gonna get in my grain and a quarter cup of silken tofu. So I'm getting in, you know, you wouldn't think of these two things on a smoothie. In addition to either a banana or a mango for creaminess, I add in my blueberries, my strawberries for the berry serving. Sometimes I throw in just a five or six frozen cranberries because they're super rich in antioxidants. Or if I have fresh cherries or frozen cherries, I'll add those in. Um, you know, basically whatever fruits I have, especially if I like, I want to use them up, I just throw it in. Peaches are great. And then I always add in a big handful of greens. It can be arugula, arugula spinach mix or kale or all three, or like a, a salad mix that's made from like chard and tat, tat soy. I think it's called Olivia's greens, um, very good for you. And then the healthy fat triangle. I, I think I need to add that to this. <laughs> so I add in um, chia seeds, ground flax seeds, and I also add in wheat germ. Um, it's very good for you. And spices. So I'll add in fresh ground ginger, some ground turmeric, always with black pepper because it increases the turmeric, um, the curcumin absorption. And then like um, cinnamon, nutmeg, you know, whatever spices you like, throw them in. And you've got like an, a meal here. You're also eating the rainbow right? You've got green, blue, red, you know, mango, yellow, you've got all the colors of the rainbow. And look at this. I mean, this is the best way to check a lot of boxes. So you've got your silken tofu, your berries, you've got your banana, mango, other fruit, you've got your cruciferous vegetables. If you add kale or arugula and spinach, another green, and then you've got your flax seed, chia seeds for your healthy fats. Um, and ground flaxseed and oats. So like, check, 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 check. So like, you're off to a good start. And the goal is to try to get all these boxes checked by the end of the day. The app is free. You should totally download that. All right. The third thing that I have for breakfast and I had today is avocado toast. So I love the Masta marker. Pumpernickel bread. It's on the recommended brands on the portal. And that's going to be my whole grains. My avocado is healthy fat plus, you know, 
it's kind of a fruit, kind of a vegetable. Um, tomato, I always count as a fruit. I slice tomatoes on my avocado. And then I put spices from the, you know, daily dozen. I'll put a little turmeric on it, a little salt and pepper, a little black cumin seed. I always sprinkle wherever I can. It's really good for metabolism. Um, and that's a common breakfast. The other breakfast I just want to mention, a little more labor intensive, like home fries and veggies. Sure, you can do that. Or a tofu scramble with veggies. To me, that's more of a, like a meal, something I'd have at lunchtime. But the other one I do want to mention is pancakes, because a lot of people are like, what are pancakes? And typically, right, they're made with refined flour, sugar, egg, oil, like all the stuff that I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to feed my body those ingredients. So get this recipe. One, one, one. It's that easy. One banana, one cup of old fashioned oats, and one um, cup of like nut milk. So you can use soy, almond, oat, and you put all that in a blender and blend it. Okay. You can be done with that. And it's that simple, or you can add a little bit of vanilla ex extract, you could add a date or a little bit of maple syrup if you want it sweeter as a base. And then when I pour them into a heated skillet, um, I, I throw frozen blueberries on. Then you have blueberry pancakes. Okay, here's the best part. Blueberry syrup. So instead of just using straight maple syrup, which is, it's not a refined sugar, it's a natural sugar, but it's still a simple sugar and um, we can overdo it. But there are, it does seem like there's some good antioxidants in it. But anyway, do um, three parts um, blueberries to one part maple syrup. So for example, three quarters of a cup of blueberries and a quarter cup of maple syrup and blend it together in a, um, a blender and just store that in a glass container, glass jar, and you have blueberry syrup. So good but it's mostly blueberries. So you can feel good about it. All right. That's it for breakfast for now, but feel free to ask me any questions about this. I'm going to jump to dinner and you'll see why afterwards. So for dinner, um, the first thing on this list is a Buddha bowl. And if you've ever been to the Makeout Cafe at Plant City, or any restaurant that offers a Buddha bowl, you know what I'm talking about. It kind of looks like this, right? It's a bowl with all the different things in it. So a common Buddha bowl might have um, a bean. So maybe it has a bunch of white beans or kidney beans or black beans, or maybe it has a bunch of cube tofu that's been marinated and baked. You're gonna have some greens. So like chopped up sauteed kale, maybe some farro or quinoa in the bowl. And there's also usually like cubed squash or sweet potato, carrots. It's like a variety of, you know, picking from here with an oil-free dressing. And I know what you're going to ask now. How do you make oil-free dressing? Okay, on the portal, this is my favorite one, is the oil-free dressing and sauces um, tab. There's lots of ideas and we're gonna do it at the next cooking class too. We're gonna to make the three, two, one dressing, which I'll just tell you that is three parts vinegar and you can pick any vinegar, champagne vinegar, balsamic vinegar, apple cider vinegar, two parts mustard, an oil-free, sugar-free mustard. So a typical Dijon is my favorite to use. And um, one part honey or maple syrup <coughs> or date syrup. Shake it up, it's good. All right, so that's the Buddha bowl. And the three, two, one dressing would be great on the Buddha bowl. So the next one is veggie chili with a grain. So maybe you make wild rice or a brown rice and then a veggie chili instead of like a typical chili where you start with the meat, a veggie chili just kind of subs in vegetables and beans. So you can use like just kidney beans, or I often do kidney beans and black beans and white beans, but then I'll throw in zucchini, cauliflower, and you know, lots of tomatoes or diced tomatoes or chopped tomatoes. And then the seasoning is what really makes it chili, right? It's not the, the meat that maybe you've had in the past. If you live with someone 
who's a carnivore and this is my recommendation you know how in the airline put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then put it on your child same thing plan your own life-saving meal for yourself first and then think about how can i make my husband happy so for this veggie chili um you're going to make it just the way you would you have this whole delicious meal for yourself and then you have a side of ground turkey that you can throw into their bowl of chili will they be happy with that and another idea is um with a buddha bowl like maybe you have some grilled chicken breast that you do separately they can add that to the buddha bowl all right so i'll, I'll continue with this theme with the other ideas so the next one is any bean any green any grain we're going to be doing that at our second class in the jump start and it's really that it's picking a bean, a green and a grain. And it's kind of like this. So the grain can be farro, quinoa, brown rice, buckwheat, um, millet, amaranth. Then there's all these new ones like, um, oh, I'm blanking on taff. No, that's more like a flower. Um, anyway, there's like um, phonio. I just recently bought it's an African grain or um frika. It's a, a wheat grain that's similar to farro. Anyway, there as long as it's a whole grain, that's the any grain. Any green, so Swiss chard, spinach, kale, collards, broccoli rob, broccoli. You know, it can be any, you know, it's ideally like the leafy greens are higher in like nutrient density, but any green. And then any bean. So if you're doing canned beans, just pick a can off the shelf or lentils, could be chickpeas, could be red beans. And then I was just in an Indian market today and there's like 10, 12 different kinds of lentils. I didn't even realize between lentils and peas, like it's, I just got some two new ones I've never cooked with before that I'm excited to try. But then um, you, what makes the what makes this killer is like the sauce. So you go to our oil-free dressings and sauces, and then depending on which your combination, like we have a lemon tahini cashew dressing that is so delicious. It makes this like delectable. You'll just love any bean, any green, any grain. So the next one's pasta and veggies. And now in the, my childhood past, like we would have pasta night and it would basically is a plate with a ton of white pasta, red sauce, and maybe like meatballs. <laughs> and we always had a side salad, of course, but it's not really taking this into account. So like, think about it being a little more balanced. And the pastas that we recommend are more pastas made from lentils, from whole grains, like whole wheat pasta or brown rice pasta, um, there's red lentil pasta now, there's quinoa, amaranth pasta, there's all kinds of gluten-free options. Um, and they're great. My recommendation is to undercook them a minute or two because they can easily overcook and just lose their texture. Especially if you're going to then heat it up with sauce, you want to undercook it. So, but the grain, if it's like whole grain or, um, you know, whole wheat <clears throat> or rice, that's this. If it's made with lentils or chickpeas, it's, you know, this contribution. Contribution. Then like the pasta sauce, again, tomatoes, fruit is this. So what's missing? Veggies. So you could throw in um, carrots into the sauce. You could and puree it and no one would even know it's there. The carrots or butternut squash blended with the pasta sauce. Like if you have kids, they'd never know. Um, but I like to do like a whole head of broccoli, for example. So one pot pasta, you just take a big pot, boil the water, kind of more than you need because we're going to cook the broccoli and the pasta in the same pot. You throw in the pasta five minutes before the end, you know, you chop up your pasta while you're, I mean, sorry, you chop up your broccoli while the pasta is cooking, throw in all the chopped broccoli <clears throat> in the last few minutes and it all cooks together, drain it, throw in a whole jar of red sauce that has no oil. And then it's more balanced. You know, you, your plate is more half and half. You, if you know, use all the broccoli. 
And if your pasta is like a whole wheat pasta, then like think of pasta fajoule, maybe throw in some navy beans to get your legume. Um, and I've, I also love this brand. It's called Barrett's Garden and they make a Farmajarn, F-A-R-M, -F Farmajarn, um, which is from nutritional yeast and nuts and spices. And it's like Parmesan cheese. It's really good. It's in the refrigerator section. And another one is um, veggie curry. So think of like a veggie stir fry that you might make with, maybe you'll start with onions. Oh, how do you saute without oil? I do asked. So you take a pan, <clears throat> dice up your onion, put it in and leave it like on medium heat. After like a minute or two, it will start to weep its own juices so you can move it around and it won't stick. If the, if the heat's too high, it will start to burn and you don't want that. And then you can add diced, um, sliced mushrooms, which will do the same thing. They'll kind of weep their own juices. If it's starting to stick and brown, it's caramelizing a little bit and that will be really delicious. So you just wanna add a little bit of veggie broth or water and unstick everything, get all that caramelized flavor and then add in your veggies. So you could add in um, chopped up zucchini, peppers, um, broccoli, carrots. You just have to be mindful of what sizes they're cut to and how long they're gonna take. So the things that take the longest are gonna be like the broccoli <clears throat> and like big pieces of carrot. Whereas like spinach, of course, you wanna add at the very end just for the last like 30 seconds so it can just wilt down and mix it up. So this kind of stir fry veggie, you can have it be more savory and broccoli. I mean, broccoli, you add like garlic and um, more like basil or oregano, like have it be Italian and serve that over farro or quinoa or over a baked potato, that would be delicious. If you stir fry that with more like broccoli and mushrooms and pea pods, you could add a little tamari or soy sauce with fresh grated ginger and have it be more Asian style and serve it over brown rice. Um, or you could add curry powder and turmeric um, and maybe a little um, oat milk, you know, to make it a little creamier, like make like a curry sauce. So there's just a lot of different directions you can go. You could take that, take like a sweet potato that you've baked, put that on top and then make a, a plant-based oil-free queso. That would be delicious. All right. And then if you make extras, which it's hard not to make extras with stir fry because you're using so many different vegetables. Save that for lunches and we're going to get to that. So um, bean burgers, I'll just talk about a little bit. You can buy supermarket burgers. Most of them have oil. It is possible to find oil-free plant-based burgers. You can make your own and that might say, sound daunting if you're not like, if you're kind of new to this, but um, there's a black bean sweet potato one that's really easy. And any recipe you find that's like whole food, plant-based, it's basically you're taking some beans and some vegetable and some grain. And it's kind of this, right? Making it into a burger and spices. And then you form them into patties and you bake them. And then you freeze them between layers of parchment paper. And then you have a stash of your own super healthy veggie burgers that you made yourself that will last you like the whole summer. And that's like one of our go-tos is having these homemade burgers in the freezer when we don't know what we're gonna have. I pull out a big shallow bowl. I fill it with greens and tomatoes. And, and by greens, I don't mean iceberg lettuce or romaine lettuce. I mean like the Swiss chard tatsoi, you know, Olivia's green mix or arugula spinach mix. Then the other veggies I want to add 
And then I bake the burger, take it right out of the freezer, put in the toaster oven, seven minutes on a side. It usually does it at 425. And then I put my burger on my salad with a salad free dressing or just like a pomegranate balsamic dressing or fig balsamic. Yum. That's one of our go-tos. Um, so let's just do lunches. And the reason I saved it for last, and this is what I do, and I know everyone's different. I use leftovers for my lunch. So whatever I plan for dinner, I have extra. And then I portion it off when I'm putting everything away. I put it in a special container, that glass Pyrex thing that I know like how much I'm going to want for dinner. I put in the the beans, the grains, the vegetables, the pasta, whatever it is in that container. And that's the that's going to be my lunch the next day. That's easy. <laughs> but another option, if you want to, you know, be a little more involved, we want to try to get in more greens. So another thing I do is get a shallow bowl, put in my greens, like my arugula spinach mix, my favorite. And then let's say you did like a veggie stir fry. I put the stir fry on it. I put in a half a cup of the um, grain, whichever grain I made. So again, your salad is not just, where are we here? <laughs> like greens and cucumbers and radishes. And it's not just veggies, but your salad now has beans on it, has grains on it. And, you know, you can throw on blueberries to really like increase the rainbow um, characteristics of your salad. You're not going to be hungry two hours later after eating this salad. This kind of salad is filling. And um, a salad like that checks a lot of boxes here. You could also, I always, when I have like, okay, a couple tips. When I have greens or a salad, I always put on either pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, walnuts, pecans. I sprinkle some like nuts and seeds. <clears throat> That fat helps with the absorption of nutrients from all the vegetables. So it, they're, it's good to pair it together. And one other tip for um, leafy greens. Leafy greens are an important source of calcium for your bones and iron for your blood and your whole body. We need those two nutrients. And typically, right, when you say calcium, people think milk. And when you think iron, you think meat. So if you're cutting those two things out, it's really important that the, the plant-based sources of these are, <clears throat> you're maximizing what you're going to get from them. So acid plus greens is, is where you want to go. So when you make collard greens or kale or whatever it is, whatever your green, you want to either put balsamic vinegar on it, which we kind of do anyway. Like think about when you make a salad, the vinaigrette often is got vinegar or some kind of citrus in it. So we we typically do add acid to our salad without even thinking about it. But if you make um, collards or um, kale for dinner as your green, you do wanna drizzle a little bit of balsamic or apple cider vinegar or squeeze a lemon or lime on it. That acid is gonna increase the calcium that you that you extract from it and absorb from it and the iron and bonus, and I know we haven't talked about this yet, but it boosts the nitric oxide production in your body as a result of eating these foods. And what that does is, is just super good for your heart health. I'm not going to get into it right now, but it's a powerful vasodilator, which will increase blood flow to your brain, to your heart, to your kidneys, all your organs. So just remember vinegar and acid of some sort, lemon, lime, plus greens together. All right. And then one other thing about lunch wraps, you can do, um, if you can find a healthy wrap, a lot of them have um, oils in them. So there are the corn tortillas tend to have less junk in them and less oil. You can find ones without any oil. Um, so just look for a lower fat version or, or one without fat. I'm not saying you have to have a wrap, but for some people, they're going to eat a lot more veggies if they're stuffed in a wrap. And it, like, this is your vehicle for eating what's inside. So you take a big wrap and then you want to think about the plate again. 
So inside your wrap, you want to have like a big handful of arugula. Maybe you're going to throw in your um, your mixed veggies from the stir fry that you made. And maybe you can throw in a scoop of um, quinoa. And, um, and then, you know, drizzle a little bit of sauce, wrap it up. And then I like using aluminum foil to contain it. And I, I wrap it up like a burrito. And then you rip when you're ready to eat it you rip open the one end and you can hold it like say you're at work or you're eating on the run or to go it just makes it easier to eat all these veggies in a neater way if you can't if you're not sitting at a table with a bowl and a spoon um the other thing i just want to mention is we kind of talked about like making the stir fry different ethnicities like indian or asian um Mexican is another one that's really fun to play around with because of the beans and the rice, guacamole I love, salsa is a really healthy condiment. So it's easy to eat like burrito, taco night for the family where you have brown meat for the husband and sorry to pick on the husband, it just is often the case. And they're the ones that need this. No. Um, so like rice and beans and guacamole salsa, then you have the meat on the side for anyone who wants the meat, or you have grilled chicken cut up or turkey, whatever. Um, if you if you think about what you're making first, you can always add that in. All right, I think those are the highlights of meal planning. Let me just refer to my meal planning sheet. The goal is that you have this filled out with several ideas and if you say you're like, oh, I have a cauliflower in my refrigerator, what can I do with that? My recommendation is to Google, my friend, whole food, plant-based, no oil blank, and you'll get recipes. So whole food, plant-based, no oil, cauliflower roast or cauliflower soup or cauliflower stir fry, whatever you want to make. And you will find, sometimes it comes up and it has oil in it, but you'll see there's certain people that cook without oil, certain websites that will become your go-to. And I just look at a couple recipes, get some ideas, and then I'm like, all right, I'm going for it, you know? So yes, cooking this way takes a little more time than buying convenience foods or picking something up at a um, restaurant. But think of this. If you're eating all that restaurant food, convenience foods and oils, and it ends up that you have heart disease and you're going to have to spend time in a hospital bed or getting surgery or in recovery or getting, you know, wouldn't you rather spend your time in the kitchen investing in your health and cooking from scratch in order to prevent all that? So that's my two cents on that. All right, guys. Thank you. Again, all these resources are on the portal and you know, you might want to hang them on your fridge for some inspiration. Good luck and let me know if you have any questions.